UN Security Council Resolution 1540 places a legal obligation on countries to prevent the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. It imposes uh, obligations on all states uh, to adopt appropriate measures to prevent uh, proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and their uh, means of delivery uh, to non-state actors and especially to uh, terrorist uh, organizations. There is no other instrument which would uh, really deal with this uh, issue in a uh, comprehensive manner. Some also see 1540 as one way to bridge the divide between the needs of the developing world and the desire of the developed world to make real progress on securing nuclear materials. 1540 in and of itself was not a tool to bridge the security development divide. What we found, however, as 1540 was implemented beginning in April of 2004, is that most countries of the Global South had problems far uh, greater than the threat of weapons of mass destruction. So a small African country that is dealing with malaria, that has an AIDS outbreak, whose educational infrastructures are crumbling, and so on and so forth, who has a, uh, an infrastructure, transportation infrastructure that's inadequate, who has inadequate border controls to police the, the flow of small arms across their borders, and so on and so forth. These were the problems that were keeping elected officials in those countries awake at night. Where do we start and how do we go into this in a way that everybody feels that they will get something out of it? And, and I think that particularly in, in resource-constrained countries, whether it's financial or, or people constraint, that we have to understand how this will make a positive impact and a difference for them. Quite um, the, 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 the dominant reality is in fact that most countries do not have expertise in identifying strategic goods. Looking for instance at dual use material that obviously can be used to, to produce um, um, WMD or just base incendiary devices that can be very destructive. So while you're on the one hand fulfilling your 1540 obligations, Domestic challenges, illegal narcotics trafficking, for instance, trafficking in small arms, those very critical need areas are also being simultaneously focused during that implementation process. And it provides an additional incentive for these governments to take this matter seriously when they realize that not only are there are, are, are their 1540 obligations being satisfied, but the more consequential, in their view, areas of national security, domestic national security, that those gaps are, are also being, uh, being attended to. If we recognize that and are sensitive to it uh, and indeed be, begin to build mechanisms that, that uh, attempt to really assist these countries in not only meeting what we believe is the greatest national security and international security threat of our time, but frankly is also uh, uh, an issue of, of critical importance to these countries uh, from a development perspective, then I think that 1540 could be a, a, a great tool uh, in our arsenal to prevent weapons of mass destruction proliferation. Full implementation of 1540 is still a work in progress. The 1540 Oversight Committee is just beginning to match contributions of equipment or training from developed world countries to those countries asking for help. 1540 is an opportunity, not a constraint, and it gives states something to bind their interagencies around, to set up the export control processes or the infrastructure to address to make sure that uh, their security and safety is not affected by the possibility of a weapon of mass destruction getting in the hands of terrorists. So for the committee, it's much more than being a matchmaker. It also sets the standards, it sets the ways that we can work together, and it also is able to convene large groups of UN states to help raise awareness and a better understanding of what the steps for implementation are going forward. You're going to need the country that possesses the material to work with other countries if they need to to make sure it's secure or they need to do it themselves. Um, it's one or the other. They have a, It's their material, they have a sovereign right to it, they produced it, but they also have uh, an obligation to make sure that it doesn't leak and that it doesn't um, get used for uh, for dangerous purposes. And if they can't do it alone or they think they need help, then I think they have an obligation to seek that help from other countries. 1540 is about raising the bar of standards and not about pointing fingers. And it's about capacity building. And I think that's really gotten people's attention that it, this is a positive way to work together.
Reducing the danger posed by the thousands of nuclear warheads and tons of radioactive materials in the world is possible. Yet this global threat requires a global effort. In order to increase global security, and therefore our own national security, nations must work together to reduce the likelihood of theft of these dangerous weapons and materials. As you've heard, some of the tools to do this already exist, but other important work is still required.